Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for listening today. I am so excited about this portion of the Word of God from the book of Leviticus. We're open to Leviticus chapter 12 right now. That's where my Bible sits open. Leviticus chapter 12. If at all possible, reach over, grab your Bible, turn there with me, please, and you're going to want to jot down some notes today from Leviticus chapter 12. You may not realize this, but on Wednesday nights at my local church where my wife and I are members, I am one of the youth leaders for the teen youth group. And right now, we have a larger percentage of junior high teenagers than senior high, and junior high kids can ask them off-the-wall questions sometimes. Well, one of these junior high kids the other day asked me what I was going to be teaching about on the radio broadcast. When I told him I was getting ready to teach through the book of Leviticus, he looked at me rather funny, and he said, quoting now, so... Brother Mark, what are you going to say when you get to one of the weird parts of the book? Well, guess what, my friend? When we get to Leviticus chapter 12, we are at one of the weird parts. At least that's what people in our day and age think. It's all about what happens when a woman has a baby. Now, since I'm committed not to skip anything when we go through a book, I'm not going to skip this passage. I'm going to deal with it. But to what end? Can present-day believers who want to share the gospel find any value from these laws about childbirth? Well, believe it or not, I think we can. Join me, Leviticus chapter 12. I think you're going to have a good time today. I have in front of me, my friend, a gospel tract, and I've selected it just for this broadcast. We publish over 40 gospel tracts, and I want to send you a sample packet containing one each of all of the tracts, but this one I selected because we're dealing with babies today. On the front face of this gospel tract, there is this beautiful, smiling baby. You just want to reach out and hug this baby. But the title of this gospel tract is this, Infant Baptism? That's a question mark. At the bottom of the face of the tract, it asks this question, what does the Bible say? There's a whole lot of people who are doing a whole lot of well, baptizing of babies these days. The question is, what does the Bible say about it? When you open up this gospel tract, there is just one big, bold word going across the tract. The word is this, nothing, nothing. You cannot find a single place in the Word of God where babies are baptized. So many parents are think that they have gotten their child ready for heaven if they get that child baptized. Friends, somebody has confused you. Somebody has not taken you to the Word of God, explained to you what Jesus said about getting to heaven. Do you know the the thief that was died on the cross there next to Jesus went to heaven and he'd never been baptized, but he did receive Jesus as his Savior? That is the key to getting to heaven. You must be born again. You must personally receive Jesus Christ as Savior. And the back panel of this track talks about that. Now, friend, you need to get this track. You need to get that sample packet. At the end of the program, my announcer will come back on and tell you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Please do that today. We'll send this sample packet. It's free. Please let me do that. You need this track and the 40 others that are there. By the way, I have talked a great deal in recent days about the fact that we're trying to print 1.3 million gospel tracts inside the country of Pakistan. They're going to be printed in the language of Urdu. The reason? Because the gospel is having a great harvest time there. Every time we print tracts there, people by the thousands come to Christ. And I'm not exaggerating. 
I'll guarantee you when we print 1.3 million gospel tracts that thousands of people will again come to Christ. The workers are ready, the laborers are ready, but the cost to do this work just to print the tracts is $22,000. I've got to have them printed by June 1 so that the workers can have the tools. Would you prayerfully consider helping us? We need it. We need it right away. Thank you so much. Well, if your Bible is open in front of you to the book of Leviticus chapter 12, I'm going to begin reading at verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of her separation of her infirmity shall she be unclean. In the eighth day, the flesh of his, the baby's foreskin, shall be circumcised. Go to verse 5. But if she, the mother, bear a maid or a daughter child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and sixty days. And when the day of days of her purification are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering under the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest, who, that is the priest, shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her, that is the mother. We're going to stop reading right there. Now, beloved, chapter 12 of Leviticus continues an extended passage on the work, notice the W word, on the work of being clean in God's eyes. The opening seven chapters there, we saw what needed to happen if a person became morally, morally unclean. In chapters 11 and 12, we are seeing what needed to happen if a person became ceremonially unclean. The difference is this. To be morally unclean means that you'd sinned and therefore you were unfit to worship God. But to be ceremonially unclean means that you are unfit to worship due to being at odds with one of the particular rituals. When a woman gave birth, she became ceremonially unclean. Having now baby, that's not a sinful thing. She was not morally culpable, but she was ceremonially unclean. You see, the book of the Psalms, Psalm 127, says children are a heritage from the Lord. That's a good gift. Then Psalm 128 says that a fruitful wife is a blessing to her husband. So what do we learn here from Leviticus chapter 12? Well, chapter 12 has two parts to it. Part one, which is verses one through five. My title for that is the offspring, offspring matter. Part two, verses six through eight is this, offerings matter. Two parts, offspring matter and then offerings matter. In part one, a woman was unclean after giving birth. Why? Verse two says she has an infirmity. In verse four, it appears that her infirmity has a great deal to do with her blood, her discharge after childbirth. The woman stayed home for the allotted days after the giving birth, and then the first place she would go would be to go to the tabernacle. We see this being done over in the life of the baby Jesus when Mary and Joseph, over in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, brought Jesus to the temple. That story begins at Luke 2, verse 22. But remember now, at the start of this broadcast, I asked if present-day believers, believers interested in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, can they find anything of value in the book of Leviticus chapter 12? Well, let's answer that right now. If you're taking notes, jot down three words beginning with the letter R, like in the name Ralph. Are you ready? Here's word number one. The word is righteous, righteous. Oh, beloved, having babies is a righteous or a right thing. 
Now, having children cannot make a person righteous from their sin. Having babies is not a way to deal and remove the sin stain off a heart, but it's a right thing in the sight of God. Children are a blessing, and God wants his people to raise up a godly seed. Sometime go read in the book of Malachi and chapter 2. God wants his families, those that trust him to raise up a godly seed. Having babies is a righteous thing. That's word number one. My second R word is the word realization. Realization. In verses six, seven, and eight, they, they talk about two different sacrifices. There's the burnt offering, which is a personal dedication offering, and second, there was a sin offering. Now, in these verses, the order of practice of these two offerings seems to be reversed. It appears, and Jewish writers seem to also to indicate this, that the woman first had to offer a sin offering. Now, she had not sinned by having a baby. The sin offering was a statement of realization. She had just brought a sinner into the world. Friend, babies have a sin nature from their birth. Once they reach the time in their life where they understand right from wrong, then at that moment, each child becomes morally responsible for their sin, and they need a Savior. They need to be born again. Well, this brings me to R word number three. My third R word is the word renewal. Renewal. The birth mother had to bring a burnt offering, first a sin offering, but then a burnt offering. And as I said, this was a personal dedication offering. It's talked about back in Leviticus and chapter 1, 2, and 3. Now, this offering was saying, Lord, I belong to you. Lord, I need to be clean from the inside out. Lord, I want you to live out your life through my life. That's what it was saying in practical everyday language. Now, the mother had to renew herself as God's agent in the life of this child. How was this child going to learn about God? Mom would teach it. How was this child going to learn the holy scriptures which could make him or her wise unto salvation? Mom would teach them. Years ago, I preached a sermon titled, Fishing in Your Own Pond. It was a sermon about parents taking the lead and trying to see their children come to faith in Jesus Christ. Believers are called on to be fishers of men, and the best place to start fishing if you start fishing for the souls of people is for those people living under the roof, those people that are part of your family. Oh, friend, sometimes we say that Sharing the gospel with our family can be the hardest place to do it, and I sometimes really agree with you on that, but it's a place we've got to share the gospel. If we can share the gospel at home, especially with our kiddos, we can share the gospel anywhere. Friend, let me ask you, what are you trusting in to get to heaven? Your, your baptism because you were a baby and your mom took you to be baptized? That's great, but may I politely say, water on the outside can't remove the sin stain on the inside. You need Jesus. That's why he died on the cross, shed his blood. That's why he was buried and rose again, that you through him can be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.